Now that we understand how things move on their own or under the uh, force of certain accelerations, and we never discussed where these accelerations are coming from, we're ready to discuss force and what causes these accelerations and what happens if we have more than one source of acceleration for a body at a given time. We'll discuss this in the context of Newton's laws, uh, referencing Isaac Newton, uh, and that will be where we start. The first thing we need to understand is that we're going to introduce one new variable to the three that we've already introduced to the position, velocity, and acceleration. And this new variable is the mass. The mass of an object is sort of a measure of how much it does or doesn't want to move if you start pushing on it, or how hard it is to stop if it's already gotten going. The mass is represented with the symbol m in our equations, while its units are kilograms, which are represented by kg as units. And so when you see m in our equations, you should always have in your head sort of an intuitive idea of a mass and how massive an object is. Jumping right now into Newton's three laws, we have here a, a great picture of Isaac Newton, who was something of a godfather of, of modern physics and, and came up with many, many, many uh, of the ideas that we use and entire terminologies and ways of thinking about things, not to mention uh, coming up with one of the discoveries of, of calculus uh, in his spare time. His three laws about motion, which came from him observing uh, data from prior scientists and, and really using his intuition, are first, that objects will stay in motion unless they're acted on by outside forces. Specifically, if it's sitting still, that velocity won't change unless it's acted on by a force and it will stay sitting still. Also, if it's moving, it will keep moving unless an outside force acts on it to stop it from moving. This is contrary to the idea of uh, some people who thought that if you moved something, it would naturally want to slow down and naturally want to come to a stop. But what they were thinking of was uh, external forces like frictions and, and things like this bringing things to slow down. And Newton correctly surmised that really things would keep moving unless there was something to stop them. Secondly, and the one that you should really, really be careful to understand and remember as we do problems going forward, is that the force of an object, or the force on an object, will be equal to its mass times its acceleration. We're going to be using uh, this equation right here, F equals MA, over and over again as we do uh, examples of, of Newton's law or force type problems. And finally, any time a force is acting from one object to another, there will be an equal and opposite force on the first object. This is often said as uh, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction, or for every force, there's a reaction force equal in magnitude, but in the opposite direction. The first thing I'd like to do uh, before we jump into the rest of this lecture is introduce some notation, because we're going to be talking about many variables, sometimes vectors, sometimes velocity, sometimes accelerations, and so we'll use different notations for each of these. The first is that for vectors, we talked a little bit about the idea of drawing an arrow over a vector to represent that it is a vector, having different components in different directions. For vectors, I will use bold letters, so like this, bold letter A, rather than drawing arrows over things. For velocity vectors, I'll use blue arrows in the diagrams that we're going to draw. So if you see a blue arrow, it is not a force contributing to the motion of, a, of an object, it's just representing the actual motion, the actual velocity of that object. On the other hand, we'll use red arrows for actual forces acting on objects trying to push them one way or the other. Let's take the three laws and apply it to an, an actual physical object like the one you see here. It has a mass, and right now it has a velocity. Newton's first law simply says that this velocity vector will stay the apple's velocity vector unless some force acts on it. So that velocity vector v will be a constant always. His second law says that if instead we apply a force on this object and start pushing it in a given direction, and this object has a mass, m, then the force on that object will be equal to its mass times the acceleration of the object. And finally, suppose that we now introduce a third object. Something we should say immediately is, as you see in the second box here still, uh, the units of force are the units of mass times acceleration. And so the units, that's what those brackets mean around f, are kilograms for the mass times the units of acceleration, which are meters per second squared. And so the units of force are kilograms meters per second squared. And we abbreviate uh, these units as newtons, or a big N. And so if you see that big N, it's just a unit label. It's just labeling that whatever number we've come up with, like five, and five newtons, is just five kilogram meters per second squared, which you can always remember by remembering F equals MA, and knowing the units of M and A. 
In this picture, what I've also done is added a second object with a force acting on the first object. And Newton's third law says that whatever force the first object is applying on the second object, the second object is also applying backwards on the first object. And so as vectors, we would say that the vectors have equal magnitudes but opposite directions, and that's the reason for the minus sign in that equation. The very first thing we should uh, discuss about Newton's third law is a very common uh, misunderstanding or confusion about what Newton's third law is saying. If I say that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction, or that forces are always equal and opposite, you could immediately stop me and say, that can't be true because I know if a truck like this hits a bug like that, there's no way that the forces on these two objects are equal. Uh, where in fact Newton's third law says there is an equal and opposite force on both of these objects. Different directions, but equal in magnitude. So let's clear up some confusion here. Uh, it is true that these forces are equal in magnitude, that the mass times the acceleration of each object will be the same. So the mass times the deceleration of the truck, really, as the bug hits the windshield, will be equal and opposite to the mass times the acceleration of the bug. The difference is that the truck has a humongous mass, while the bug has a very, very tiny mass. What this means is that the bug will experience a huge acceleration, while the truck will experience a very tiny deceleration. And it's these accelerations that we actually feel. And you know the accelerations are uh, as they are because if these two quantities, the mass and the acceleration, have to be equal, while the masses are so very different, that means that the accelerations have to compensate to make the uh, equality hold, to make Newton's third law still true. And so we know that the acceleration that the bug feels will be tremendous, while the acceleration or the deceleration, the slowing down of the truck, will be pretty well insignificant. And so it's those accelerations that we actually feel and experience as people or trucks or bugs. And keep that in mind as we go through further problems. <laughs>